imagine that scientists try to understand the impact of anti-zombie vaccine over time. They randomly capture 30 volunteers and test their zombiness on three different time points. First, before giving the anti-zombie vaccine, secondly, one month after vaccination, and lastly, one year after vaccination, just to see how long the effect of the vaccine holds. Any of the two pair time points could be compared with the McNamara test, but if you have hundreds of time points, it's a lot of work. So the lazy scientist found a shortcut, namely Cochrane's Q test, which checks whether there is any difference among time points at all. For that, they gathered all time points below each other to create only three variables. The vaccine time points themselves, the test results, and finally the ID of each individual volunteer, which helps not to mess things up. Cochrane's test is useful because if there is no difference between hundreds of time points, it will give you a high p-value and you wouldn't need to compare hundreds of time points among each other pairwisely. That saves time. However, if Cochrane test is significant, we'd need to compare samples among each other pairwisely with McNamara tests. But what does Cochrane test actually do? Visualizing the data helps to understand it better. Cochrane's Q test looks for differences in proportions of three or more paired samples, in which the same individuals appear in each sample. So the null hypothesis for Cochrane test is that the proportion of successes is the same for all groups, while the alternative hypothesis is that the proportions differ for at least one group. Visualized data already shows that there is a difference in proportions. We just don't know whether this difference is significant. That's why we need to conduct a test. For that, we'll use Cochrane Q test function from our statics package, which needs only two arguments. Our data in a lazy long format and the formula, which takes the outcome on the left side, which needs to be binomial and mutually exclusive, for example, plus and minus, yes and no, time points will get on the right side of the formula and the ID of each volunteer after a vertical dash to make sure results don't get messed up between individuals. Since the results are significant, we'd need to conduct pairwise McNamara tests. And luckily for us, our statics package provides pairwise McNamara test function, which does just that, and needs the same two arguments, data and formula. However, this simplicity is dangerous for two not obvious reasons. First, the function uses continuity correction by default, which was shown to be very conservative by several scientific papers. Thus, if we stop the function from using continuity correction with correct false argument and compare the results with and without correction, we'll see that continuity corrected p-values are higher, which might help to miss an important discovery, also known as the type 2 error. The second danger is that this function uses a Bonferroni correction for multiple comparisons by default, which was also shown to be too conservative. A correction for multiple comparisons is important though, because otherwise we can discover nonsense, also known as the type 1 error. Fortunately, pairwise McNamara test function allows to change the method easily, and if we use whole method, we'd see that the difference between month and year becomes significant. So let's make final conclusions. A very small p-value of the general Cochrane's test allows us to reject the null hypothesis about similar proportions, in favor of the alternative hypothesis that proportions between time points differ. The consecutive pairwise McNamara tests show that the vaccination significantly reduces the proportion of zombies as compared to not vaccinated people, and that we need to refresh the vaccine because the proportion of zombies one year after vaccination significantly increases again. But if we would use a Botferroni or continuity correction, we would think that one vaccine is enough and would increase our risk to become a zombie. So, as you can see, using right statistics is healthy. But you might have wondered what to do if the outcome is not only plus and minus, but has more levels. Well, then you can use Friedman test, which you can learn more about from this video.